Hey, welcome to Replicate this AE edition. This is problem number two, tracking type. This is one of the few, only, this is the only exercise that doesn't have any source files because we're going to be using typography, uh, type layers within After Effects. So let's get started. Let us go to the type tool at the top of your screen and what? It's interesting. Okay, so now I'm sure that I've clicked the type tool. I've got my type cursor here. I'm going to click the quote button to get this little crosshair in the center so I can make sure that I'm, I know that I'm going to want to center my text. So I'm going to click right there in the center after having clicked quote. And I'm going to write the words intake. Let's write it correctly. Satiated. That's a word that means full. Okay, that's a little huge. I'm going to hit the quote key again to get those to disappear. And I'm going to shrink my text down. Okay, if you ever get this annoying red bar at the bottom like that, that means you have caps lock on, which means that nothing here in the comp window can render. So I need to uncheck or click caps lock, undo caps lock, however we say that. Okay, I'm gonna just center this vertically a little better. Quote key again. Make sure in your paragraph panel that your text is centered. If you don't know where your paragraph panel or your character panel or any panel is for that matter, it's always going to be under the window menu. Paragraph, character, it's all here. And some of them, some of the more important ones have shortcut keys, hot keys. Command six is character, command seven is paragraph. Okay, I still think that's a little bit big. Let's go with, how about 60? Okay, 60 point type. It doesn't matter which typeface you use. I'm using alternate gothic. You can use any sans serif typeface or any typeface you choose. Okay, I'm going to introduce you to what are called range selectors in this exercise. Range selectors function like magnifying glasses. A magnifying glass has the effect of magnifying whatever is put underneath it, right? Uh, the way that a range selector works is that it applies an effect using a left side and a right side and the ability to sweep that effect over our type. And what we're gonna do here, here, let me bring up the example real quick. Here's the example. Okay, that's what we are gonna end up making, although I'm not using Helvetica Bold. Everything else will be the same. Sorry. Okay, so essentially we have to write on this text using that famous effect from the X-Files when like CIA headquarters, Langley, Virginia types on in the lower left hand corner or the lower right, whatever it was. So keeping in mind that magnifying glass metaphor, we need to apply essentially an invisibility effect to this word and then we're going to slowly peel it off from left to right like it were uh, let's see like it was the invisibility cloak from Harry Potter okay now first thing you should know about text layers in After Effects is that to animate them with range selectors you need to open up the twirly this little triangle is called a twirly I think I've mentioned that before and you will always see this animate drop down so the first thing we're going to do in order to get our text to animate on is to click animate and select opacity because we actually are animating opacity here. And the effect, like I said, that we're going to peel off is invisibility. Now, what opacity is invisibility? It's zero, right? We shouldn't be able to see anything with our text here. I'm going to flip down the range selector twirly. And you'll see that we have three properties here, start, end, and offset that we can manipulate. The metaphor of the magnifying glass that we used earlier, it's not just a magnifying glass with fixed a fixed frame. It's a magnifying glass that has a left side that can move right and left. It's got the right side can move right or left. And then the whole effect can move off, back on again, and off to the left. Okay, so offset keeps the sides of the magnifying glass fixed and just moves it over the word. This is probably, moving offset left and right is probably the closest you'll get to an actual real life magnifying glass. Because magnifying glasses in real life, the edges do not move, at least mine don't. 
Okay, so as you probably noticed when I was scrubbing the start property from 0 to 100, that's pretty much what we're looking for here. So let's go ahead and keyframe start and let's say two seconds into the future. I'm jumping two seconds and then I just jump back one frame by hitting command left arrow. I'm going to go ahead and scrub this value up to 100%. I'm going to jump to three seconds at my work area by hitting the letter N on my keyboard and I'm going to preview what we've got so far. Okay, that's good. The only thing I don't like is how the letters fade on. From the X-Files effect, the letters did not fade, they just appeared. They were either invisible or visible. So how we're going to remedy that is flip down the advanced twirly. There's a smoothness setting there. We're going to type in zero. Okay, so no smoothness, no tweening in other words. Okay, our letters just pop on now. Now, can you see this little red pin right here? This is the start pin. This is the end pin right here. And basically, everything in between it has the effect applied to it. I'm going to move that back real quick. We're not going to keyframe end at all. All we need are two start keyframes. The first start keyframe is zero. The second start keyframe is 100%. Okay, so now we have our type written on. If you remember from the example, we need to track this text. We need to add tracking. However, for simplicity's sake, we are going to make another animator and not try to add tracking to this animator one or this range selector one. So, in order to add an entirely different animator to a piece of text, you need to make sure nothing is selected under here, like animator one, range selector one, or any properties. I'm going to click down here somewhere in the blank gray space, go back up to animate. If I wanted to add something to this animator, by the way, I would go down here to add, and I would go to property tracking. But that's not what we're doing in this case. We need to add a completely separate animator, just because this is a beginning exercise. Okay, just a warning, there's now a baby in the studio here as I'm making this tutorial. So if there are any baby sounds in the background or sounds of a baby hitting little toys on his, his, his bouncy seat, uh, it's not me. Okay. So just make sure that there's nothing selected here once again. And we're going to go up to Animate Tracking. Okay, we see we have animator 2, we have another range selector, and we've got two properties, tracking type and tracking amount. We only need tracking amount. And what happens when we do tracking amount? That. It expands. Okay. So what we're going to do here is drag our playhead to just a frame or two past. We could do it right on, I suppose. Let's see if the J and K, okay, nope, that doesn't work actually. The J and K shortcuts do not work in this case. So I'm going to use the ever useful navigational arrows that I hope all of my students will use. This left and this right arrow. Uh, sometimes setting a keyframe with this comes in handy, but these are going to save your life and you should use them. So jump to the next keyframe. I can close that back up because I don't need that anymore. I'm now going to set a tracking amount keyframe. Do you understand why I used the navigational arrows? It's because I want to synchronize. I want these two keyframes to be aligned and I don't want to mess with trying to eyeball it. And I think I've showed you in class that you can hold down shift and it snaps to keyframes. I'm holding down shift right now and see how it goes snap. That also works. But those navigational arrows, so useful. Tracking amount zero, let's see, let's take one second, one, two, three, I am moving the playhead by hitting command shift right arrow to jump 10 frames at a time. I did that three times, which equals one second, as you can see we are at three seconds on our timeline. And I'm going to scrub up my tracking amount until it almost fills the screen, about right there, 27 it looks like. I'm going to jump another second into the future by hitting command shift right arrow, one, two, three. And then I'm going to go back to zero again by typing in zero right there. Okay, I'm going to set my work area N on my keyboard, and let's see what that looks like. Okay, it looks pretty good, although it's a little bit linear right now, and I think that the beginning is a little bit slow. So let's make a couple adjustments here. Let's... Okay, with my layer selected, I'm going to hit the letter U on my keyboard, which is going to reveal only the keyframes. 
uh, only the properties that have key frames. And so since I thought that beginning part was a little bit slow, I'm going to move it back. Let's see, get my playhead back at zero. I could eyeball this and I could drag these back, I don't know, maybe 15 frames. Or, like I talked about in class, we can move all of our keyframes with hotkeys, which everybody loves. It's not as good for tutorials, actually, because things just happen on screen, but just FYI, moving keyframes. If you hold on Option and hit the left and right keyframes, they'll move one at a time. If you hold Shift and an Option and then left and right directional arrow keys, rather, they will jump a whole 10 seconds. So I'm going to go maybe twice, jumping back 10 frames, uh, which means that these two, yeah, this intake until satiated is 20 frames shorter now because I moved all of these keyframes back. The distance between the start, zero start, and the 100% start keyframes is now, what is it? One second and 10 frames, okay? And these stay the same because I drag them all uh, simultaneously. Okay, the other thing that we need, let's preview that, let's just check out the speed. Yeah, that's better. It was a little bit slow before. Okay, let's add easy ease. Let's add a little bit more organic movement by selecting all of our keyframes. When you add easy ease to a property or a keyframe, you have to select them. I want my tracking and my start to all have easy ease. So I'm just gonna drag select over all of them. Go to animation, keyframe assistant, not time reverse, easy ease, which is also F9. Okay, you'll notice that all of our keyframes turned into little hourglass shapes. That means they are no longer linear. Let's press spacebar to preview. Okay, it's a little bit more elastic now, isn't it? That looks good. Guess what? I think we're done. We'll see you on the next tutorial.